previously. Let's give it your all. I will do my best. And so we go. Hello friends, my name is Saturday Knight, and welcome back to Professor Layton in the Curious Village. Where were we? Right here. Hold on one second. Let me just move this over, so. Um, mm -hmm. Luke and Professor Layton are shocked to see him return to Reinhold Manor on his own. Busy with the murder investigation, Inspector Chelmy warns Layton against meddling any further. However, Leighton is confident that the golden apple and the morning's murder are linked to one another. Finally free to move about, Leighton and Luke begin their search for the golden apple in earnest. Oh yeah, what were we doing? Ask around town. Oh, there's a dog. Hey, hint coin. I was going in here, right? Oh no, I'd already went in here. I remember now. They're gonna go this way, I think? Oh, yeah, the mustache guy. What's this? Professor, there's something on the ground here. You're right. It appears to be a scrap of paper. Will you check if anything's written on it? Sure thing. Let's see here. The boss complimented my latest model today. He's a good guy and he's given me a new sense of purpose. I'm sure this is my true calling. I want to perfect my skills so I can repay the man for his generosity. Sounds a great deal like a journal entry, doesn't it? Judging by how the writer uses the term the boss, I imagine he was under the employee of the Baron. I the models to fit every situation just like the boss asked me to do. I gotta smile when, it, when I see how interested he is in them. That's the end of the entry. Do you suppose this person made some sort of models for a living? Hmm. Oh, hint coin here. Nice. Hey, go inside. Yes, little mustache man. I'll talk to you soon. All right. What have you got for me? Yo, Professor, did you find what you were after? Never mind that, though. I've got something more important to talk about, namely chocolate. Help me solve this puzzle, and I'll tell you something I bet you'll find very interesting. Okay. <laughs> puzzle 69, chocolate puzzle. You have a hankering for chocolate, so you buy a huge sheet of 30 chocolate squares. The sheet is five squares long by six squares wide. Okay. You can only break the chocolate at the lines that run between the squares and, you, squares and you aren't allowed to stack multiple segments on top of each other. Keeping those rules in mind, what is the fewest number of times you'll need to break the chocolate in order to separate each of the 30 chocolate squares? Hmm. <clears throat> Let's see... Break it here. One, two, three, four, five. But then it'd be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm pretty sure that's not the way. Hmm. Yeah, Alright, give me a hint. Uh, it's common for people to start thinking about the way they need to break the chocolate in order to achieve the objective at hand. However, the truth is, no matter how you break the chocolate, the answer you arrive at will be the same. Hmm. Split a sheet of chocolate and you get two segments where there was only one before. If you break one of your two segments, you get a total of three segments. Since your third breaks, regardless of what segment you'll choose, you'll yield a total of four segments of chocolate. Do you see a pattern here? So, if I break it here, that's one. Hmm. Can't do the middle the other way. So, let's do... Uh. Hmm. I still don't quite get it. Since you can't break multiple segments of chocolate at a time, you increase the total number of segments you have one by one. 
If you caught on to that, the rest of the problem should be a breeze. I don't understand. So if I break this in half, whoops, I have two segments. Right? And then, according to the hint, I break one of those segments. I have a total of three, but this doesn't really help me. I don't understand. One. Two. I don't, I don't get it. Two. Three. Oh, because I can't break multiple, so I don't understand how just breaking it across like this would be slower. Especially if I have a knife, so like one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would make the most sense to me. Nope, nope. I don't, I don't get it. If that's not right, I don't know what it is. Oh, how embarrassing. I could do like this, one, two, whoops, why am I so bad at this? That's two, and do three, or five, six, seven, that's still nine. <clears throat> what am I doing wrong? I tried breaking it like this. I don't understand. I do have two segments now. What does that matter? Mm. So, one... Whoops, why am I so bad at this? One, two, three, whatever, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. See, that's what I tried to do the first time, but that doesn't make any sense. That should do it. It doesn't make any sense. Everything. I wasted three hand coins. <sighs> okay. If you want to experience the best dining in St. Mysterio, you gotta check out Crouton's restaurant. Everything he makes is yummy. Don't get me started on the stews. You have to try it yourself. World map? Layton. I'm really mad at that one. Making me use hit coins. Talk to me. Mm. Not being a member of high society myself, I've never so much as had a conversation with Baron Reinhold. Now, Sody, as much as I'd like to keep chatting, I'm awfully tired. I think I need to go lay down. Are you feeling unwell, sir? I'm just plumb exhausted lately. It's the awful noise coming from the tower, you see. It's gotten so loud I can't sleep a wink at night. Do you know what's causing the noise? It's just a rumor, but I hear that every time that sound rips through St. Mysterio, someone disappears. They say that the ones who go missing are people who've been talking about feeling tired. For those who disappear are back before you know it, so it's probably just a little poppycock. 
Whenever the noise sounds, someone disappears. Interesting. Do you think the peculiar sound has anything to do with that strange old man who abducted Raymond? Um, certainly a possibility, isn't it? But why would he release his victims after going through the trouble of kidnapping them? Why is my camera so far off? Do you have a puzzle for me, sir? Two is certainly crazy about puzzles, aren't you? Well, I've got a whopper of a puzzle for you. 68 worth 40 pick rats, pick rats, and I need to get this out of here. A number of five-sided shapes are hidden within the picture below. How many can you find? Answer when you think you found every hidden shape. Okay. That's logical. Every hidden five-sided shape, huh? All right. So I've got four just from the houses. And then... Eight from... Okay, so here's where I'm seeing four. So one... There we go. Whoops, I'm sorry. And then there's four of those because there's four sides, right? Mm. Okay, so four. And then where I'm getting eight is right here. And there's four of those. So that's eight. <coughs> um... I want to say it's just eight because if I do this one, two, three, this is the other one that I just did. Uh, that's not what I meant to do either. Two, three, four. I'm going to say eight. Let's see what happens. Luke, here's my answer. It's not eight. <clears throat> Frankly, I'm ashamed. It's probably twelve. So there's probably a shape I'm just not seeing. So I'm gonna try twelve. Because whatever it is, you have to multiply it by four. Okay. Oh, yep. See, that's the one the one in the bottom left. That was the one that I was trying to figure out in my head, and I just couldn't. So, yeah. <clears throat> Alright. Nice work. Three different types of pentagons are hidden in the picture. Since the shape can have face four different directions, you have a total of 12 unique pentagons. What cunning lads you two are. I hope you'll stop by and solve puzzles with me again sometime. Thank you. Do you have another one? Sorry, Sunny. I don't have any more puzzles for you right now. Okay. Bye, though. Oh, there's no one here. Huh. Okay. Well, off to the market. <coughs> you there. Yes, you. Do you mean me, good sir? Yep. You. This flower vase is yours, right? I've been keeping it nice and safe for you. I've never seen anyone just forget something like this while shopping. You're a vase space case. Har har. I'm sorry, but you must be mistaken. I've never seen that vase before in my life. What? This fancy vase doesn't belong to you? So why'd that guy tell me to give this to you? Huh? What did this man look like? Well, my hat has a way of obscuring certain details from me. It's the worst, I tell you. <laughs> but back to the issue at hand. The mystery man wasn't a regular around here, that's for sure. Don't sweat it, though. I'll just give it back to the next guy, guy next time I see him. Speaking of flower vases, I know a puzzle I bet you'll like. It's not a hard one or anything, but the least I can do for you... It's not a hard one or anything, but it's the least I can do for you for bothering you about the vase. Is making me work? I mean, I guess, yeah. Someone knocked over this fabulous vase and shattered it. Put the pieces together and restored the vase to its original shape. There's one catch, though. Mix it with the pieces or a single piece from a different vase. Oh, this is going to be easy. I'm really good at puzzles. Boop. Boop. Mm. Okay, 
it's not that one, and then this one goes here. I want more, like, actual puzzles. That would be nice. I'm really good at puzzles. Not sliding puzzles. Fuck sliding puzzles. <clears throat> good job. Repairing the vase wasn't that much of a challenge, was it? Oh, if only fixing things in real life were this simple. Poor game designer. You've got a good head on your shoulders. I'm impressed. By the way, you sure you don't want to take some fresh sausage home with you? Uh, believe me, these are some links you don't want to be missing. <laughs> No, thank you. We're just fine. Too bad. Not to bust your chops or anything, but that deal was a one-time offer. Maybe if you had said yes, maybe you'd have said yes if you knew it was at stake. <laughs> I think we're done here, Luke. I couldn't agree more, Professor. I thought your jokes were kind of funny. What's this? But I have a bad sense of humor, so... We're kind of allowed to throw trash on the ground. I'm going to pick it up. It's an old newspaper. Honestly, you think that everyone would know that trash goes in the tra... Wait a second. You have to come take a look at this article. Well, would you look at that? It appears to be Inspector Chelmy. <laughs> look at that. Chelmy held as the brilliant detective and devoted husband. Murder's mystery is solved. Inspector Chelmy identifies killer. Hmm. Chelmy celebrates each successful case with his favorite treat, his wife's sweet potato fritters. That sounds so good. Wow, who saw that one coming? He's so gruff, I never imagined that he had a soft side like that. <laughs> Just look at that old grump grinning over the plate of sweet potato fritters. I knew he was fussing over nothing when he said he hated sweets back at Reinhold Manor. Hmm. That's right, look, he did say that. How very curious. Oh, well, hello. Um, yes. Can I help you? Or can you help me? Because I'm trying to solve things. So it's true what I'm hearing about. Is it true what I'm hearing about the two of you? Are you really running about the town in search of the Reinhold fortune? That's correct, sir. Currently, we're in search of a close friend of Baron Reinhold's. We believe he has entrusted this friend with an important note. Gracious, that's quite a search you have on your hands. Excuse me, my name is Archibald. Gus, I mean... The Baron and I were great friends, thick as thieves. I, we used to have the most amazing conversations late into the night. Do you think that perhaps I'm the one you're searching for? Yes, I think so. What luck th that after all the searching, we should bump into you at a place like this. I have one question. Do you recall ever receiving a small note or written message from the Baron? Mm, no, I don't remember ever receiving anything of that sort from Gus. But he did give me a fine desk that once belonged to him. It's at home. Maybe it holds some kind of clue. The Baron's desk, you say? Excellent! Would you like to come over to my house and take a look at it? You are most gracious. If you'd be kind enough to allow us to look at it, we would be very grateful. I'm sure Gus wouldn't mind if the two puzzle lovers such as yourselves... I wouldn't mind two fine puzzle lovers such as yourselves looking over his desk. I cannot talk today. Actually, let me impart a few pearls of wisdom on you while I've got your attention. Focusing... <sighs> I'm so sorry. Focusing on your case is all well and good, but if you don't solve some puzzles, you'll be sorry later. So make an effort to find puzzles around town and just solve the ones you can. Take it from this old timer. It's good to stop and small the puzzles sometimes. Alright, I'll get off my high horse now. Let's head over to my house. Follow me. This is Gus's old dust. Take all the time you need to examine it. Splendid. Luke, let's get right to it. Hold on. Wait. I'll come back. Oh! Hey, Lucy, what's up? I saw a coin, I saw a coin. Where is the coin? Come on. There it is. Well, it's good to know I'm back over here, but I want to go solve that other puzzle. There sure doesn't seem to be a lot of animals around town. You're quite the animal lover, aren't you, Luke? Now come along. We don't have time to sit here and play around. All right, so I've already got all the puzzles from them. That's his house, so I want to go up here to the market and solve these puzzles real quick <laughs> oh a customer welcome welcome i have some great deals on sausage today and my skirt steak will make a, any plate a fashion plate ha <laughs> ha sorry i gotta fix my screen real quick sorry to disappoint you sir but we didn't come here to shop uh, and here i was thinking i was going to reel in a big sale you got a hungry look about you you know 
Well, if I can't interest you with one of my five meat products, can I at least tempt you with a puzzle? Yeah. Is it about meat? Sausage thief. Yep. <sighs> Somebody ate the butcher's sausages. Here's what the four boys have to say. B ate the sausages. D ate them all up. I didn't eat them. No way. B is totally lying. Only one of these rascals is telling the truth and all the others are, needless to say, lying. Can you figure out who ate the sausages? All right. Um, all right. So. I want to say C. It's the only one telling the truth. C ate the sausages, and it's the only person telling the truth. And the only person telling the truth here is D. Wait, what? If you assume A to be the culprit, both C and D statements must be correct. Choose B, and the other three boy statements must be true. If you make D out to be the criminal, then what both D and C are saying must be true. None of these possibilities fit the conditions uh, set forth in the puzzle. Hey, you're pretty good at this. As a bonus for solving my puzzle, I throw in some gossip I heard. Word is that somebody lives in that dark, grimy tower. You have to be one of the odd duck to want to live in an old, mold wreck place like that. Flower vase? Hey, I have a place to put that vase. Or, I have flowers to put in that vase. Well, if it isn't you two again. Alright, if you want your fortunes told, solve this puzzle for me. I don't want my fortunes told. It's never good. Is it ever good? A broken window. Oh, God. Four kids were playing, and one of them threw a ball right through your window. Here's what the f they had to say for themselves. Not me. I didn't break a thing. Okay, I'll tell the truth. It was me. I broke it. Don't be mad at A. He didn't do anything. B didn't break the glass, I swear. You know for a fact that the scamp who broke the window is lying. However, an unknown number of other children may be lying as well. Can you figure out which one of these darn kids broke your window? Uh... Okay, so it can't be B. Because if B broke it, he would be telling the truth. So... has to be D. Now we know. Mm. It's not D. Uh, I suppose Remember, the child who broke the window may not be the only one lying. True, true. So I want to say A broke the window. Good job. B and C were also lying about what happened, even though they themselves didn't break the glass. Make sure you give those two a good scolding as well. Hmm. It's going to be a doozy of a rainstorm tomorrow. Hang your wash inside if you want it to dry. Cool. Anything else over here? Nope. Found another hit coin. Or any more puzzles? Before I go back. Remind me not to talk to him anymore. <laughs> All he wants to do is sell me his meat. Were you trying to throw the grapey mall of fate swallow you whole? Can you have another puzzle for me? The wire cube. You want to create a cube out of metal wiring using the fewest number of wires possible. You can bend each wire as many times as you like, but no portion of the cube can have more than one length of wire running over the same edge. Don't worry about uh, how one wire will connect to the next because you'll use a soldering iron later on. What is the fewest number of wires required to complete the task above? Okay, hold on. I actually can figure this one out pretty easily. So, we have one here. And then, two, ooh, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. So, one. One, two, 
three, four. Oh, it would make four. I bet I can have less. Hold on. Clear. One, that would be two, three. Nope, I don't like that one. So let's do one. Wait, hold on. Hmm. Mm. That would be three. I want to say that you can have two. But I can't figure out how to do it. It might be three, though. That should do it. it might be three. Uh, Give it another shot. Thank you. I'm going to put three this time. Actually, I'm going to put one. I think you could do it in one if you're smart enough. If this doesn't work, then I'll put three. I'll put three. Because I know that it can't touch the same edges. Or run along the same edges. Can't write threes. Because I did it and I got it down to three. Hmm. You don't know how wires work. I got it down to three. If you can't get it down to three, then you're not very smart. Look, here's my answer. Critical thinking is the key to success. You need four wires to make the cube. Three straight lines make up each of the cube's eight corners. At least one wire must terminate at each corner. Since there are eight corners, you'll need eight wires to form things properly. Each wire has two ends, so the total number of wires needed is four. Hmm. Goodness, I can't believe you solved it. It was meant to be. I'll tell you what, since you wouldn't solve my puzzle, I'll read your palm. Give me your hand now. Hmm. Seems that calamity follows you wherever you go. Try your best to stay out of harm's way. All right. I'm going to rearrange the rooms for a second. Oh, let's do this first. Chummy in the papers. While talking in with Giuseppe in the market, I stumbled upon a newspaper article outlining the inspector's latest collar. As I turned to leave the market, I bumped into a man named Archibald, who claims to be a friend of the Baron. So it turns out the Baron bequeathed the dust to Archibald. I simply can't wait to take a look at it up close. Okay. The Chomi claims to dislike all sweets. A scrap of newspaper look found claims that his favorite food in the world is sweet potato fritters. That being the case, why did Chomi fly into such a rage when Matthew brought him sweets at the manor? Because it's not Inspector Chomi. Alright. Yes, I see improvement here. I have flowers that will look smashing with this. Let's... Okay, let's give this to you, and this to you. Knowledge of geography is key for any puzzle fan. Neat, now I can brush up on my geography. Globe, I suppose I might give it a spin once in a while. Okay, so you like the globe. This could be handy, one should always watch the time. What workmanship? I wonder if it's tea time yet. Alright. So...
Hmm. Okay, so you like the TV and the carpet. Okay, hold on. I want to see what it does if I put the flowers in there first. Okay, cool. I think they're pretty happy. Leighton's got a lot more stuff than Luke, but I think they like what they've got. <clears throat> Alright, cool. Mm -hmm. Alright. It's good for now. We'll switch stuff later. Let's go continue the story. Alright. The desk is there, I know. But I want to see if you've got a thing for me. Can't really be finished so soon, can you? No. Oh, no. Search the Baron's desk. What about this drawer? It's a note. Ooh, with an X on it. It seems to be a note. They point us to the direction of that golden apple. What do you make of this X? Hmm. I'm afraid I just don't know at the moment. The hunt begins. It's finally time to start the search for the golden apple. Oh. Complete. Sorry to interrupt you, but I just received a call from you from the innkeeper Beatrice. It seems that she's concerned about one of her lodgers, and she'd like your thoughts on the problem. Well, we'd best go help her. Thank you, Archibald. Now off to the end we go, Luke. But I want to look at the desk more. I didn't get to finish looking at it. Apparently there's a hint coin here somewhere. Yep, there we go. I want to make sure that there's no extra stuff on here. Aha, see? See? There's three hint coins on this thing. Alright, I'm happy now. Got more stuff here. Aha, I knew there was a puzzle here somewhere. Look, Professor, there's a hidden puzzle here. Uh, and I'll not have enough honey in this. Oh, God. Okay. In front of you are four tangled links of rope. Mark the ones you think will form a knot when you grab them by their ends and pull them taut. Not this one. This one will. This one will. That one won't. I think I've got it. No, I was wrong. Oh, I was sure I had it. Hmm. All right, I'll try again. All right. Oh, A won't, so only C. I think I've got it. Had to look at A again. Professor, I've solved it. Good job. The only thing you need to do to solve this puzzle is look at it. However, the images themselves are complicated, so it's easy to get confused. It would be fun to test all the various configurations with actual pieces of rope. That puzzle was no pushover. Eh, that is alright. Three, that means I've gotten six hint coins out of here. 
you have another puzzle for me, sir. Oh, no, I don't want to look at the desk again. Go back. Go back. Can I look at the chair? Nope, okay. Do you have a puzzle for me? Yeah, I am finished. I want to see what my journal says. The Baron's note. Archibald was kind enough to invite us to examine his desk we received from the Baron. Sure enough, hidden inside the desk was a note to seem that seems to have something to do with the location of the Golden Apple. I'll think on it more later. But for now, Beatrice has asked us to return to the inn. We mustn't keep her waiting. No, we mustn't. I'm going to go ahead and go to the inn and see what's going on with Beatrice. Let's go, Beatrice. You got anything new for me, Lucy? Adrian is really nice, but she comes up with some tough puzzles. I bet. All right, let's go. You got some stuff for me, Deke? Nothing good can be said about that tower. Yep, okay. Mm -hmm. What do you got over here, Mustachio Man? <laughs> if you really want to understand St. Mysterio, you need to search the village thoroughly. Good luck, fellas. You'll need it. Thank you, Stachin. What you got for me, Beatrice? Make sure there's nothing else in here. Huh. It's a hint coin. Yep, right there. Alright. What's up, Beatrice? Welcome back, Professor. I've been so looking forward to your return. Thank you. Was there something you wish to discuss with me? Oh, my yes. Listen to this. One of the guests here just performed a doze and dash routine on me. The man's gone and so are all of his things. I'd like you to bring him back. I'm a businesswoman after all. How can I run a business with scoundrels skipping out on a bill like this? Would you mind if I looked around the man's room? Please do. Look at it all you point. Here, I'll show you in. Oh my god. Yuck. What an absolute pigsty. This whole place stinks of smoke and there's trash everywhere. Beatrice, can you describe this guest's appearance for me? Well... He had a sharp mustache, and it's pretty clear he wasn't around from around here. That was obvious. Mustache reeks of smoke. Oh, do you suppose she could be talking about Inspector Chelmy? Inspector Chelmy, isn't he the self-important windbag who's been working up at Reinhold Manor? No, that's not him. The man who stayed here just looks so much more evil. He was wearing a long trench coat. I'm sure you know the type. Oh, where could he have run off to? Sorry to ask this, Professor, but would you be a darling and found the thief who skipped out on his bill? Hmm. I'm counting on you to catch the no good fiend who skipped out on his bill. Can I go back up to the room? No? Okay. Well, I'm going to actually end that episode there. Um, and we're going to go find this thief in the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode of whatever I decide to make. Lunar Night signing out. Bye.